welcome everybody. This is uh, Melanie Benson Strick, Small Business Optimizer, and I am kicking off my blab with three of my great friends. So, hi everybody. So, uh, hi. Hey, Melanie. Yeah, I'll like, everybody you wish to have at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, we got to balance all of our platforms, so I'll introduce exactly. my friends here in a minute, but I want to thank you for being here. Um, this is a new series I'm doing as part of my Small Business Optimizer podcast, and it's Power Up, and today we're going to talk about what it is like to power up your online marketing presence, your website, your social media, you know, all of this effort we put into getting seen online. There's ways that we can power it up and get more traction, get more results, really be able to track more of our, our ideal leads. And so when I was thinking about this topic today, I knew I wanted to bring on these three ladies. We've, we've chatted before. You've probably seen them on my podcast before. Tracy and I are co-hosts on Speaker Chat. So um, these are ladies that I know have some amazing tips today. So here's how to get the most out of our time together today. We're going to be together for about an hour. And if you've got any questions, you can post them in the chat box on the right. It's one of the things I'm loving about Blab. And if you're watching this later, you can always come join us live by going to livewithmelanie.com. And what, when you put a slash Q in front of your question, it'll pop up and we'll be able to take questions as we go throughout. Now, secondly, I have a huge favor to request of you. I'm new in the Blab format. You would help me out immensely. If you would just click on that little button, tell a little bird, and invite your friends on Twitter or on Facebook to come and join in live with us right now. We've got some great tips in store that will help anybody who's trying to get seen online in a more effective way, and uh, we would love to have you share this with your friends. So uh, I'm going to introduce our guests here in a minute, but first, if we are new friends and we don't know each other yet, just a little bit about me. Um, I've been working for 15 years to help visionary thought leaders and creative entrepreneurs remove the obstacles in their way and implement the highest performing strategies for them, which means there's a little bit of a unique approach there. So you can experience more impact and more income and uh, we can connect more at successconnections.com. Now, um, I want to introduce my guests here today and uh, while you guys are jumping on, be sure to do a little uh, shout out on the, the little message panel as well. I want to hear who you are, so tell us uh, who you are, what you do. We'll check in with you along the way. But first of all, let me introduce Denise Wakeman. Now, Denise, who's in the top right corner, and uh, make sure you click on that little uh, button there that looks like a person, and you can follow her on Blab and on Twitter, I believe, as well. Uh, Denise, is an online, yeah, Denise is an online business strategist who works with authors and online entrepreneurs like ourselves to strategically use social marketing tools to build an audience, gain visibility, and demonstrate credibility so they get their message out in the world. And uh, I can't wait to dig in with Denise. She's got some great tools. I've known Denise for, wow, years and years and years, and she's always got okay. some uh, awesome stuff. And here's Denise's uh, URL, denisewakeman.com forward slash now. She's doing some really fun stuff with adventures and visibility, going all over the world and bringing us... Uh, lifestyle type people along with her through uh, her social media. So that's super fun. So uh, let me next introduce us to Laura Rubenstein. She's in the bottom right. Hi, Habiba. Ooh. We've got Habiba from Lagos, Nigeria. Wow, awesome. welcome. Hey. I have no idea what time it is, but you may have just won the award wow. for <laughs> Farthest Away joining in on the Blab. So glad to have you. So Coach Laura um, on Twitter and here on Blab, Laura Rubenstein. You can also follow her by just clicking the little person icon. Now let's uh, learn a little <laughs> bit about Laura. Laura is an award-winning social media and marketing strategist. You guys can probably see a theme here. She's optimized marketing plans for over 1,000 small businesses. And along with being the co-founder of Social Buzz Club, which, by the way, is a fantastic resource, uh, it's a content syndication and sharing platform. She's also the author of the best-selling book, Social Media Busted, The Small Business Guide to Online Revenue. And I also have to say, on a personal note, Laura, is um, she joins us from uh, the Women's Speakers Association as well. She hosts our WSA TV. And Laura, something happened when I made my 
my uh, script a little bit bigger, I somehow lost your website. Could you just remind us what your website is and post it for sure. us? In the it's transformtoday.com, and that's where I blog. Yay. And transformtoday.com. And if you wouldn't mind, just jump in there and pop it in the scroll for us. And last but not least, let me introduce you to Tracy Emin. Tracy Emin, who's also known as Partner in Business. And again, for those of you new on Blab, you can uh, get yourself uh, some great traction by following Tracy here as well. Just clicking on the little person icon. Now, Tracy and I go way back. We're uh, co-hosts of the Speaker Chat for Women Speaker Association, but let me introduce her formally. She's known as the online presence and social media strategist who demystifies the power of keywords and how they can be used to help your audience find you online so you can increase your bottom line. And really what we're looking at here is somebody who understands the power of hashtags and using keywords mm. to help you get found online. And you can find out more about Tracy at keywordmarketingsecrets.com. All right. Well, we've got a power pack session ahead of us. And uh, I, I want to just start with, um, I think, uh, Denise, I want to start with you. I want to find out a little bit about your thoughts on how to get found on the web. Um, because literally in this day and age, if you aren't found on the web, if somebody types into Google or they're, you know, looking in whatever search engine, because there's plenty these days between YouTube and Instagram and all the different ways people can search. But if you're not getting found, um, you, I know you believe you just don't exist, especially to your target audience. So what's your tip today on how we can get found on the web? Well, there's a baseline foundation that I believe that you have to create in order to get found. I mean, there's there's gazillions of ways to build your visibility on the web, but there's a foundation that you have to have first. And it really starts with establishing your home base or your blog site. So it's more than just having a blog. It's about having the whole site that supports what you're doing. Uh, the next piece, and yeah, I mean, I could go into tons of detail in all this, but I won't, but <laughs> you can ask later. Uh, so you need a blog site where people, where you can establish your <laughs> own digital real estate. You also need an email list. This is really mm -hmm. critical so that you can connect with people in an ongoing way, because while social is fantastic and we all believe in that, you know, you know, very wholeheartedly, you still need to be able to follow up with people when they, you know, move through your funnel and all your online profiles. Um, the other thing that you need to be doing is creating original content on a consistent basis. And consistent has to be like based on when you can do it. I'm not going to say you need to blog three days, three times a week or, you know, every day, but you need to find a figure out a schedule where you're posting your own original content on a regular basis. So people can know they can count on you and that they know that you're committed to your business. And you also before need you go to, on, Denise, I just want to stop you there. Everybody write down consistency. Yeah. That's really what Denise just called out for us. Like consistency is everything in your marketing. So go ahead. Just everything have to make sure everybody is, write that everything. down. That, that is the bottom line. That's the key to everything is, as far as I'm concerned. You need to be also um, connecting with other people on social, having conversations with them. And you also need to be sharing and curating other people's content, which establishes you, helps establish you as a go-to resource in your industry or niche. So those, that's the baseline as far as I'm concerned for getting found. Yeah, great tips. And I think um, we're going to build on that and go even a little bit higher. I want to jump over to Tracy for a second. But I want to remind everybody, if you have a question, be sure to <laughs> post it for us and do a slash Q if you have any questions for our guest today. And as we get going, I have a feeling there'll be even more questions. Uh, I want to do a call out to online events underscore SAS. Why don't you make, tell us what your, oh, it looks like that's Sandra. Sandra, is that you? Hi. And Gail Watson, who's our president at uh, WSA. Hi, Gail. Glad you could join us for a little bit. So, Tracy, I want to jump over to you because I have a feeling you can build on what um, Denise was just sharing with us about getting found online. How do keywords tie into getting found in these different platforms that Denise just revealed to us? 
Well, keywords are important to help you get seen. So it's great to have, you need to have your blog for sure. And don't look because <laughs> mine's, you know, a little bit behind, but, but you need to actually have you it within the titles of your blog posts. It's important to have keywords. Ultimately, what we want to do is we want to have people find us that don't know that we exist. The people that are already following you, they're going to, they're going to come to you no matter what. It doesn't matter what your titles are and it doesn't matter really what the content is because they already know that you're offering solutions to really what they need uh, to help them get seen online. But at the same time, you still want to be marketing those people that don't know you exist. So you need to determine, you know, what their concerns might be, uh, what problems they might have, maybe what their goals are. It might not be that there's an, you know, uh, Lisa Mannion always says, don't now always focus on the pain points. You want to maybe focus on their passion points. So incorporating that into your titles on your blog posts within the content, within your social media as well. There's, you know, it's amazing what we can do. And we can see that with speaker chat in 140 characters or less. But you need to draw people's yeah. attention to what they're looking for. So that's how great. Keywords and I know I've heard you say that if you're using the wrong keywords, that it actually can work against you. And I don't know if we're going to have time to get into that today, but I want to let everybody know that at Keyword Marketing Secrets, Tracy's giving you a lot more about how keywords work and maybe how they're working against you, uh, wasting time and money. So be sure to check that out. Sorry about Dante. He's decided he needs to go talk to the gardeners. So <laughs> got to love working at home. <laughs> All right, Coach Laura, Laura Rubenstein, I want to jump over here and uh, let's talk a little bit about strategies and growing your online visibility. You know, there's a million things we can do, right? There's no shortage of different opportunities. <laughs> places we could put our time and you know one of my specialties is working with people who are in overwhelm and one of the things I think we have to look at is how do we choose the best strategy to get seen online and maybe even prioritize so we're not trying to do a million things poorly we can do a couple things well so here's the thing if you have that foundation that Denise was talking about um, it, it doesn't have to be overwhelming because you have the content, you have that consistency, and then you can focus on what I call engagement. So if you took, uh, once your content and your foundation is taken care of, you've got that systemized, if you take care of um, connecting with people, I'm really focusing on that in terms of, you know, just doing three or four things. Always check your uh, you know, private messages that people are sending you on each network and respond. The killer um, to your online uh, connection and profitability would be not responding. Okay, so definitely make sure you're responding and commenting. So if people are commenting on your thing, comment back or go out. If somebody made an impression on you in your market, another influencer, comment back. Um, it, it builds your visibility and that engagement and that leads to other stuff. So you want to be consistent in the engagement area and that's why I recommend 15 minutes a day to respond, to comment back, to reshare other people's content, repin, repost, retweet, re whatever, regram, <laughs> whatever you can do. Just your favorite networks where you get the most traction do that. You don't have to spend all day doing it. Again, five minutes max on an, on your network of choice that day. And then um, connect. Connect with new people like uh, Tracy was saying. Because you, by doing that, other people are going to want to connect with you. So it's going to be really easy. You can respond to their connection requests, their friend requests, um, their comments, their messages. Uh, so by being out there, being consistent, that 15 minutes a day, um, I promise you things will happen. And it's not overwhelming. Yes. And I think that's really key is like giving yourself a few minutes every day to really focus on that and to and to think of your social media platforms as a as a place where you're networking virtually. Like if you go to a yes. networking meeting and I know we've all done that in the past, you're not going to go. You're not going to do these flybys where it's like you're not going to throw your business cards at people and walk away. Right. Like you're going to take the time to actually connect and engage and ask them <laughs> questions and you know, I think that some platforms lend themselves better to that. But, God, what a great way to actually stand out in the crowd is to be real and, and actually make a, you know, a, an attempt to connect with people and, and, you know, like you said, go back and forth. I think that's great advice. And um, you actually built a platform that helps people do that more effectively with Social Buzz Club, right? 
Mm -hmm. It helps people do two things in there. One is we uh, in, invite people to submit their content, and we first invite you to share other people's content. And like uh, was it Denise, you were saying that um, you know you you actually when you share somebody else's com content to me, that's the highest compliment you can give to someone on social media. So, so you're true. building goodwill out there, and you're being a resource to your own network and a hero to them in the way because you don't they don't have to go out to all these other people that you're going out to. You're you're curating them, as you said, and um, we like to help you do that at Social Buzz Club. We want new, fresh content. We want new, fresh categories. So um, we invite you to try it out at socialbuzzclub.com. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, I'm a it's fan. It's a great resource. I am, too. I, I think it's an awesome resource. So. Uh, for those of you that are Women Speakers Association, you actually uh, have uh, a special deal with uh uh, Social Buzz Club. So make sure if you're a WSA member, you check that out. Now, Laura, let me ask you a question. I know you mentioned you might have to leave a little early. Do you still have to leave at 1030? Okay, so I'm going to ask you my second question then before you have okay. to go. <laughs> um, I want to talk a little bit about time management. Because again, if we're talking about how to power up, right? Like one of the things every entrepreneur, every business owner, every service professional needs more of is time to do the things that are going to have the greatest impact. Um, how much time does somebody really need during the day to manage their online presence well? And I don't just mean managing, you know, their social media comments. I mean really being purposeful and intentional and creating a presence online that, you know, is going to have the impact that they want. Well, in the beginning, it takes quite a bit of time to do the setup and that foundation. Once you get the system done, I am a proponent of it, putting about two hours a week into content development and get some people to help you if you possibly can with graphics, video. Um, and uh, so you have to take the time for that content and whatever time it is you have, make that consistent, whether it's two hours or more or less, or you can delegate that to you have an idea for an article, have somebody go write it, you edit it, that kind of thing. Um, so if you say two to two and a half hours, for content development and then 15 minutes a day for responding of course then there's going to be work to do if people start contacting you for business and I don't call that social media management I call that your business right. working your business <laughs> so um, I, I tend to keep it really simple um, you're going to want to do some analysis at least you know ideally once a week if not once a month so if you're using a management system like Hootsuite there's plenty of others out there I'm I'm a big fan of Hootsuite. That's H O O T S U I T E dot com. Um, it allows you to to communicate and do a lot of what I was saying in terms of interacting with people um, on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and um, even Google Plus pages. You can um, it, it will even send you reminders to Instagram. So. Uh, you can really manage your social media much more effectively by using a, man, a content management system. And there's tons out there. If anybody else has a favorite one, uh, put it in the uh, chat box or shout it out here. But I highly, I'm a big fan of that because then you're not missing messages. Yeah. Um, Tracy taught me I'm about Buffer.com. So buffer, that is absolutely buffer. one of my favorites. It, it, it seems to work a little bit better for different platforms. But uh, I have a question I want to ask all of you before Laura has to yeah. leave. But Denise, um, I want to uh, do a little follow-up with you, and all of a sudden it just jumped right out of my head, so I will be back to that. Um, I would <laughs> like to have everybody, sorry, managing all these things, it makes my, uh, makes my right. brain a little squished. So, uh, so I would like to hear what one platform you think for 2016 is the one you want to focus on growing the most and why? And I'll tell, I'll start, I'll share mine. And it's <laughs> okay. live right here. Like to me, I feel like live streaming and, and the integration of video, especially if you're a speaker, a messenger, or you use speaking to grow your business, there's no better way to transcend the, uh, the uh, trap of travel and get your message out globally than to tap into these tools. I absolutely love Blab which is why, as we were talking about earlier, I'm going to be integrating more of the Blab sessions into my podcast and repurposing them. Denise, that's what I want to talk about in a minute. <laughs> um, so um, I think Blab is <laughs> definitely the area I plan on uh, cultivating and, and really focusing on growing uh, my impact through in 2016. So 
Anybody feel uh, clear on the one they're going to focus on for 2016? Yeah. Okay, go, Denise. Yeah, for me, for, for me, it, it's also Blab. Um, <laughs> I've already been making the shift over for my Adventures in Visibility show, and I think along with that. I mean, I mean, I totally believe everything you said about, you know, the travel, the, vi the visibility with video and repurposing a piece of content. I'm like 100 percent with you on that. The other one that I would say is, for me is Instagram. I really I love Instagram. I, love Instagram. I think it's a fabulous um, the storytelling tool. It's quick. It's easy. It's a great way to connect with people. And I mean, I, I love Instagram and I, I need to. Um, you know, figure out my my strategy there a little bit better, but you know, I I, I think I'm gonna. That's a big place for me. Yeah, we've got um, online events underscore Saz saying uh, Snapchat. Okay, I gotta say, Snapchat mm -hmm. is a massive mystery to me. <laughs> I know my niece mm -hmm. is on it, and she's constantly <laughs> chatting with her friends from <laughs> school. But uh, I'm intrigued. Yeah. We'll have to talk about that more in a little bit. I also want to do a shout out. We got a bunch of new people joining us. Looks like uh, Linda Jones, Hillary Steele, Intellectus, Transcendus, Transcendus. Did I say that right? Uh, I think we had um, one more person jump in, and I missed where you are. Oh, Robert Cohen. Hi, Robert. Glad to have you on board. Uh, and Habib, Habiba is saying, I don't understand Snapchat either. Okay, maybe it's just uh, where we're at in our journey. <laughs> uh, anyway, Snapchat's still a mystery. Uh, Coach Laura, what's the one that uh, you're going to focus on? Well, I hate to be a copycat, but Blab is, is where it's at. <laughs> uh, there'll be others that I'll be uh, focusing on, too, but mo but uh, really putting a, a strategy together for Blabbing because what I love about it is that instant um, visibility you get yes. when you Blab because so many people are using it. But I will tell you, Facebook is coming out with something called Facebook Live. It's their oh. live streaming. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have to see if that's a game changer. Yeah. And how, how it's adapted. And if they have the same visibility factor that um, Blab has, it could be bigger. So keep okay. that back Because the audience, the audience yeah. is so much bigger there. Yeah, yeah. Right. it is. And it'll be interesting to see if the algorithms play yeah. in. So um, we've got a couple questions coming in. Um, Serena... She's asked a couple questions. One, she wanted a little more clarity, Laura, about what content development meant. And she's also asking, what's the difference between Blab and Google? And Laura, since you have been doing both so much, maybe you can tackle both those before you move on. Yeah, because we're using um, Google Hangouts on air for, uh, which ties into YouTube, mm -hmm. for um, our WSA TV shows, which are great. It's great to have content pieces that you can kind of stage in a way ahead of time and then post up. Um, this live stream, we don't have a chance to, you know, go edit it before people see it. Right. So th that would be a big, huge difference uh, between <laughs> that you could use Google Hangouts for, and that's what we do with WSA versus a Blab, though the natural, you know, technical glitches, et cetera, <laughs> in Blab, you know, it happens. And, and we're in this world of, okay, we get it. It happens. not a big <laughs> deal. So uh, there's uses for both of them. And, um, you know, Google, when you search Google, they obviously favor YouTube videos. So if you're interested in getting more search engine juice, the Google Hangouts that tie into YouTube are uh, real powerful for that. Yeah. So, that's kind of uh, the difference there. And in terms of content, what did you say? Content uh, development? Yes, what do I mean? curious what, it means, what you meant. I, it, I mean, have a plan for the uh, blog topics you're going to be writing about and the post you're going to put on social media about your blogs and others. So you might just create some, you know, graphic images with words on it or infographics. A lot of people are calling those graphics with words memes now. Uh, M E M E or memes, <laughs> but I believe it's memes, and so that's um, that's what I mean by content development, creating the the stuff you're going to put on social media. Yeah, great, thanks, Laura. And Tracy, I'm going to come to you in a second, but I just want to say one more thing. You know, Laura helped me run a Google Hangout for uh, my Money DNA program earlier this year. And I got to tell you, I never could have done it without you because, oh my God, there was so many things. And of course, I wanted to embed it, but. Um, you know, one of the big distinctions for me is that um, I, I find that blabs are easier, but they're also public. 
So you can't control who's seeing that blab when it's live, whereas Google Hangouts will allow you right. to have a conversation that is private because you can embed it in your in your own site or use it, um, you know, without letting everybody know about. And like um, Laura said, you can re record it and edit it before it goes out to the world. So just, you know, different things. I'm also finding that Zoom, if you are maybe a little more technically challenged like I am and you don't have an amazing coach Laura to uh, hire to, you know, come on and run it for you and you're intimidated by it, Zoom is a, is a really nice replacement. We're actually going to start using that for our um, – money mindset uh, virtual workshops that start in January because we can do this, but they're private and you do have to register to have access. So just a couple more technology tools out there for everybody. Yeah. And it was mentioned uh, by our at Confluent Forms guy here. Thank you that you can download your blabs and upload them to YouTube so you can get some of that Google juice from them. Absolutely. Yes. Um, but like you, you were saying you, you can't hide it at first. And the other thing is, Google Hangouts on air, you can live stream from your website. So you, you get the visibility and the traffic to your site um, if you want to do that as well. And that's what we do with Social Buzz U, which is our um, monthly webinars that we do free and we live stream them. That's why I have to leave early today. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's right. I'm going to say. <laughs> well, thanks. We appreciate you being here. It's also going to open up a spot that we might invite somebody to come play with us. We'll see. Tracy, let's uh, let's get to you. I know we've talked about Blab, and um, but what about for you with 2016? And you know, you've got a new program coming out. What's going to be your focus for the new year in terms of the platform yeah. you most want to develop? Yeah, I still want to say Blab as well. And the reason I want to say Blab is because in the small opportunities that I've had to be as a, a guest, um, I have actually sent people the links and I've gotten two clients out of that just because of the opportunity for them to to get to know you. Right. So it's one thing to be typing or it's another thing to be you know, on the phone with somebody. But when they actually see your face, I think that it's really hard to pretend to be something that you're not when you're when you're talking right now and you get to see us you know whether stumbling over my words or not is you can see my personality and a lot of it we do business not with businesses we do business with people and so showing who you are and and your passion for what you're trying to do to help other people I think really goes a long way so I would really like to incorporate this uh, zoom I'm also looking at as well because I am uh, just sort of putting the final touches on a new program that I'm going to implement in January. So I'm, I'm going all through a whole bunch of platforms right now. I, I, you know, I've touched a lot over, over a period of time, but now I'm kind of putting them towards getting this new program out. So, but Blab is definitely one of them and Google plus as well. I'm yeah, you know, Google plus is one of those things that Google seems <laughs> like it should get be the best one. And I do know it's awesome for search engine optimization. It's one of the best ways to get found if you're using your proper keywords, uh, which we'll talk more about in a minute. But um, I actually am really surprised that we all said Blab and nobody went to the Periscope uh, conversation. You know, everybody's raving about Periscope. And I personally, I love this interaction so much more. I feel like it's so rich and I feel like, you know, we're all sharing. It's, I don't know if you guys noticed, anybody's considering Blab, look over here on the right to the message window, all these people who've been joining since we started, people sharing, um, you know, we've had people who are uh, popping on and then their followers see and they're like, well, what are they doing? And it's so sticky and so viral. And I know Periscope has a lot of that too, but I just, I think it's the ultimate selfie and it makes, I'm just not comfortable with it yet. So <laughs> I, I don't know, you got any Periscope people uh, who like to play on Periscope over here? I know we use it a lot for Women's Speakers Association and uh, we, we do get some great traction with it. I just, uh, I'm, I'm picking one toe, one, one platform to tip my toe into for 2016. <laughs> I, I think Periscope's pretty cool, but I agree with you. It's the all about me show versus um, all about we show. So I, I, it's just, it's hard for me to get excited about that. If you're an all about me person, I think it's a fabulous thing. Yeah. And it is also great to do in mm -hmm. conjunction with another medium, whether you're a podcaster or you're a blabber. Yeah. That's going to be the new word. <laughs> you're a blabber. <laughs> then, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I really like this too. Yeah. Better than Periscope. Yeah. Well, we're in agreement. So no wonder Blab is the 
is the uh, 2016 platform that everybody's going to optimize. Okay, we've got a lot of conversation going on over here. Thank you, uh, Walter at uh, Villard Kingdom for sharing with everybody. Dotto Tech saying Periscope is a presentation, Blab is a conversation. Great distinction. Like I like that. Yes. Uh, blabist. Uh -huh. Rick, Rick Wolf is saying we're blabist. I like that. Blabist. 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 All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I blabber. need to depart, so mm -hmm. I'm going to be going for now. Thanks, Thank Laura. you so much. Thank Thank you. Keep up. Nice we'll see you on the next one. Bye. <laughs> so, Good Denise, job. I want to pop back up to you here. Um, you know, Bye. you have been online since the beginning, practically, and I know you, <laughs> you know, you got your trenches, uh, your, um, you, know, you built your trench around blog, uh, blogging and then moved out into other online marketing strategies. You know, if we're looking mm -hmm. at how people can really, really power up, um, I think this idea of repurposing that you and I've talked about before is so mm -hmm. important to understand. Um, can you talk a little bit about the strategy of content repurposing and how someone could use that to get so much more impact from their efforts online? Yeah, and this has become a, a top of mind content <laughs> or con concept uh, again. Recently, I did a show last week. I was a guest on somebody's show all about repurposing, and I'm in the middle of writing another blog post about it. So it's it's right there. Um, you know, repurposing is about uh, reformatting your existing content into other other ways that it can be consumed by your audience and posted on other platforms so that you can reach a wider audience. And uh, so, you know, we're all really busy. We all uh, spend time creating this fabulous content. You know, I'm going to make that assumption that we're not just, you know, creating garbage because I know you all, you're all serious about what you do. And, um, so we create this great content and we share it. And then what? You know, it's it, what we don't have time to create unique content every single day necessarily because we are serving customers in our business. So how can we get that message farther out beyond just doing a status update? Because that's super easy. We hit the share buttons. It goes out on all our social platforms and that's the end of it. Well, there's so many different places now that you can post long form content like, uh, you know, what you're posting on your blog. So, you know, now we have LinkedIn publishing, we have Medium, we have Facebook notes that's been revamped for your, for your profiles. These are all places where you can take some of that evergreen content that you're producing. I wouldn't say it's, it's good for, um, you know, repurposing doesn't work that well for time sensitive content, but taking that evergreen content, articles that, um, you know, don't require a lot of change and look at where else you can post that. And for repurposing, I often advise, you know, that there are opportunities to revamp it a little bit, you know, maybe try out a new headline or title for the content. Um, you know, LinkedIn is more of a business oriented professional network versus Facebook, you know, which is looking for more personal or even medium is looking for more personal stories. So how can you tweak that content that you wrote on your blog and republish it on another platform that has a new audience that, you know, may not ever see your blog. They don't even know you exist until you republish. So um, looking at that, I think is really important to do. You don't have to hit every single you know, <laughs> platform out there, but where are your, where does your audience, where's the audience you want to reach hang out? So if you're looking to um, connect with, you know, business leaders, then LinkedIn, what can you do with that content uh, that you've already published and put it on LinkedIn? I mean, you can add images, you can add video, you can add audio, you know, make it richer in some way, maybe tweak the language so it's actually um, targeted at that new uh, audience or that different audience. So, you know, there's so many ways I'm covering at least 14 of them in the article <laughs> that I'm writing right now. Um, and that's probably just the tip of the iceberg, really. <laughs> but um, I figure I had to keep it, you know, doable. But I think it's important because it helps you reach new audiences and um, find new ways to monetize. Yeah. Denise, let's share with everybody where they can find your blog. So when this uh, article comes out, uh, they can find you. <laughs> it's at denisewakeman.com. Great. 
Um, and, you know, I just want to say something, you know, my principle on how I help entrepreneurs really achieve higher performance, be able to get more traction and generate more revenue. The whole idea is leverage. And so what Denise is sharing here is this concept of how do I leverage something that I've already created? One of the principles of expanding revenue is you do something once and then you figure out how else can I use it over and over and over again? Um, and, you know, we do this all the time where we might have this live. This will be actually shared on my podcast in a few weeks as uh, we get into the new year. Um, we do blog posts that we uh, tweak and refine and repurpose on LinkedIn <laughs> on, you know, for an article there. So there's so many different ways you can do this. I, if you're new to content marketing or you're looking for ways to kind of take what you're doing and save time and make it more per powerful, definitely check out Denise's uh, blog. She's got great tips all around. Hi, Walter. I see you're wanting to get in the hot seat. Let me just finish up a couple things. Walter, can you share with us in the messaging what you'd like to do in the hot seat? Do you have a question or did you want to share a tip? Why don't you share it with us over here on the side uh, so we can uh, make some decisions about who we're going to bring into the hot seat. Thank you very much. And if you have any questions, uh, we're getting ready to uh, wrap up our last uh, big question here for Tracy. This is a great time to ask our experts Anything that you want about getting your online marketing uh, seen better? How do you get better traction with it? Remember, we're looking at three things. How do you get more visibility with what you're already doing? How do you get more of your ideal clients to see what you're doing, right? Like you can put all the stuff out there in the world, but if the people that you want to work with aren't seeing you and they're not finding you, is it really valuable what you're doing? This is the whole principle of optimizing, right? Uh, you don't want to attract just anybody. You want to attract the people who most need you. Uh, plain sight, I see you have a question here. We'll get to it in just a second. Uh, and then the third thing is how do you optimize your effort by, as Denise was saying, repurposing a lot of your content, sharing it across platforms in a way that it continues to get you seen and heard. So Tracy, you know, one of your specialties is uh, really understanding the keywords and the hashtags that will get you seen and get you uh, in front of your ideal clients. What would you say is a, a really valuable tip for um, having hashtags be used more effectively? And maybe we could explain what a hashtag is and what's the difference between a keyword and a hashtag and how people can use those hashtags to help their ideal clients find them in their marketing efforts. Okay. Yes, definitely. And that it does make a, a huge difference. And, and sort of building a little bit on what Denise was saying too, as far as repurposing your content, you can have similar content out there. People digest it in different ways. So having it on all the different platforms on your blog in bits and pieces or in long form, it's important to have all of that incorporating it into your newsletter as well. Right. So we all digest things differently. We also are, we also determine whether we're going to open something or respond or engage based on usually just a few words. And those few words are what you could be calling your, your keywords. Keywords tend to be one, two, maybe three words together, sometimes longer. You'll do a search on Google and you might put a whole sentence in on what you're looking for and that can be considered a really long tail keyword. But you really want to determine what your, your ideal clients are looking for. So the difference between keywords and hashtags is hashtags allows you to put that extra attention onto your specific keyword. And when you hashtag it, you actually create a link. So it's searchable. It, it just allows it to be even more searchable than the keywords themselves are. So a real simple way to use the hashtags is really highlight what your ideal clients are looking for in the way of solutions. One of the ways I use it when I'm sharing out content that is valuable to my ideal audience is, you know, for instance, social media. So if I'm sharing out about Facebook, then I might tag it with, you know, hashtag social media. And what, what happens with that is people will use programs like Hootsuite um, or in the individual platforms, there's also search options as well. And you can use that hashtag social media to bring up everything that's been posted about social media or anything that's been posted about the topic that you're really interested in. It allows you to filter out what becomes a lot of noise when you're following a lot of people. 
not all of it might be relevant to what you're looking for at that time. Yeah. So make it easy for people to find the information that they want to find. I think that's the, the most important part about the hashtags and, and keywords is really make it easy for them to find that information. Denise, I wanted to check in with you. Do you hear a lot of feedback on Tracy's line when she was just talking or is it just me? Yeah. Okay. So Tracy, yeah. you got some interference going on there. Sorry. <laughs> but I think we got the gist of it. And um, I will say that if you're an Instagram marketer, hashtags is are really important. But again, it's about knowing what hashtags to use because there's some hashtags right. that get you in the spam. Uh, you know, the people that are all about buying leads and stuff, and all of a sudden you're in this horrible loop with all these these uh, spammers. <laughs> but so really understand your keywords. I use this series of entrepreneur, small business, inspiration, mindset, some of the things that are really related to my. Uh, core audience and it, it really helps me attract people quickly and you know Instagram's a funny uh, platform but I love it I, it's like that instant gratification yeah. oh look at this quote that made me feel good today right <laughs> I exactly exactly or look at this beautiful picture I love uh, I, I love National Geographic speed I mean they have the most yes. amazing amazing imagery Yes. And again, it's about um, really understanding where your ideal clients are and what platforms are they hanging out on. So, you know, when we were talking about what's the, the platform that you're going to pick to optimize for the new year, think about where is my ideal client and where are they hanging out? For some people, LinkedIn is going to be the best platform if you're more of a business oriented uh, solution or you're dealing with high end professionals. Uh, you know, if you're dealing with more of the, the user base and, and uh, you know, like I know um, a lot of personal development, you know, any of the platforms work, but you really need to understand uh, your platform and pay attention. Now, here's a key for powering up. Don't just post and walk away. Post and track. OK, so engaging. Yes. But tracking. Who is getting active with what posts? Which ones at what time are actually getting better um, visibility? Who, you know, which type of things do you lose a bunch of followers, you know, when you're posting those things? And really pay attention to where the energy soars and what actually takes off and what doesn't in the platforms that you're using because testing and tracking is your key to power. Okay, you can't power up if you don't know what's working. So that's just my little, uh, you know, coaching insight for the day is really understand where you need to put more energy by knowing what's working and what you want to do more of. It's great to go in and test and, and play around with new things. But after about three months, you need to start gathering, you know, measurement of what's working. Now, I want to go back to a couple of questions that came in. I love when you guys ask questions. Um, the Lord was saying, yes, my point was that repurposed content can be directed towards long term value for people that will see it generations later on. Really great point. You know, kind of that legacy concept there. Um, there was a question. Remember, you guys put uh, slash Q if you have a question and we'll make sure. Uh, plain sight that. video. Yes. Has a question about online video. Great. So plain sight. We talked about Blab as video, but we haven't talked about video, just straight video marketing and, and what we could do with that. Um, so do you have a particular question? Um, you know, maybe we could talk a little bit. I know, Denise, you've done a lot of video marketing over the years, and it's one of the things that you've played around with. I know for me, I have a love-hate relationship with video marketing. I will just be totally clear about that. Um, I do publish a podcast, and every week I actually rotate what I share in my podcast. I will have collaborative interviews like this. I will interview somebody one-on-one, -on -one, and I also do just me talking and sharing an insider tip to help you get more power from your business. And um, those are actually the hardest ones for me to do because it's just me, and I'm not you know, interacting with someone else. So that um, I do I do have a consistent every week we're putting something out. And if we're uh, launching a program or opening up the doors to some coaching or something, one of our tools, we'll do maybe some more um, specific videos. And we do a lot with uh, especially as we get in 2016, we're going to do a lot more with video marketing on YouTube and on Facebook, because it's my understanding that if you're going to do paid ads, and we found this on, on YouTube. We, we tested some video ads there and we have also tested this on Facebook. Video ads get better traction than a lot of the just plain image ads, especially if you're a newbie and, you know, you don't have a lot of uh, experience tracking. So that's my experience with video uh, online. 
uh, plain sight. Um, Denise, you want to add anything to that? Well, I'm kind of in a similar place as I've been, you know, dipping my toe in and out of video for years and years. And, um, you know, it, the video I love to do is video like this because it's immediate, it's recorded, <laughs> and then I can repurpose it into other things. And, uh, you know, I don't have, to, I don't think about it too much, but I do have pre-recorded videos also. And I've been playing around with, uh, uh, the, you know, uploading native video to Facebook versus YouTube and what's getting more traction and all that because YouTube videos aren't getting any traction on Facebook anymore. So, you know, I'm very aware of that as well as is, is that if you're going to do video, you want to upload video directly to Facebook versus you know, a link from YouTube to Facebook. So that changes things too, because then that just adds, you know, another step that you have to go through, right? Yes. You know, so, so it's, yeah, you know, but like all of this online marketing stuff, I mean, it's always changing. It's always evolving. It's a huge adventure. And, you know, it's, you just got to embrace it and just say, go with it you know <laughs> otherwise you're going to be upset and and pissed off all the time and, and yes. why why live that way you know it's fun well so. you know you're actually bringing us to the conversation of mindset and how important mindset and, and your attitude is in terms of being able to power up your business and you know i was taught a long time ago because this is not actually a natural way of being for me to be adaptable and flexible right <laughs> and um, i sometimes have to make that my mantra i am adaptable and flexible i can go with the flow i flow like water around all these obstacles right but you're right you know a lot of things are going to change when we're dealing with the internet and you can get your system down and then it all changes and i know people that have literally like had million plus businesses that just went into paralyzation because they uh, over relied on Facebook ads or something like that. So you got to mm -hmm. stay, you know, it's, it's why testing is important, but you got to be in that, just keep being in the flow and you got to stay focused on the outcome and be willing to shift how you get there. So Tracy, you know, do yeah. you want to add anything in terms of how keywords and hashtags and really, you know, getting that side of it can help with the online video uh, marketing yes, uh, strategies? Once again, keywords come into play everywhere online and, and, um, you know, there, there is an option when, even when you're, when you're uploading to Facebook, right? You can put a, a title in. You want to use all those places where it asks for a small bit of information to describe what your video is about. And you want to incorporate your keywords into there. Same thing when you're uploading it onto YouTube. There's a, I mean, there's a lot of place for you to add information. You can add it in the title. You can add captions that have your keywords in it. You can add it within I mean, you could write a whole blog post in the area that they give you on a YouTube uh, video upload, right? Exactly. And I mean, it's, <laughs> and the thing is, is that why not? If you're, because we can repurpose, you can sort of massage it a little bit for, for everywhere that you put that information, but it just allows more people to see you. And yeah, we're talking about technology. You know, you're saying about flowing and my, my mantra in some ways is, uh, you know, with technology, whatever can go wrong will will probably go wrong. And you just get through it and you smile and something else is coming along tomorrow. And we're going to have to test the waters on that, too, because who would have thought about that we'd have blab? I mean, really, this was never even in my radar. And all of a sudden it's right there in your face. And so there's going to be other things that are going to come along that you're going to be able to, you know, choose as the right platform for you. So yeah. anybody that hasn't quite found their platform, there's going to be a new one coming along that's probably going to be absolutely perfect for you. And just sort of keep watching and, and keep up to date with Denise and, and the information she's sharing on, um, you know, anything that she's come across and, and Melanie and myself and, you know, just go with it. So, yeah, I mean, I'm really, 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 you know, want to make this a strong point about the mindset because, it can mess you up yes. if you're angry all the time at what's changing or you can embrace it and enjoy what you're doing. And, you know, I just do not um, adhere to the like get upset when Facebook changes. It's like, yeah, so what? <laughs> you know, what's new? <laughs> because usually, usually if you think about it in hindsight, the changes are for the better. Yes. So it's about embracing what's happening and just 
and being you know joyful about it because it's going to help you in the long run. These platform developers don't make changes to you know like get you. <laughs> you know they're make, doing it because it's going to be better for you. Yeah. So thank you, Denise. We have a question coming in from Valor de Kingdom. Do you think that shorter blabs are sometimes more productive? So I think this is an interesting question because every platform is different, right? And there's actually a very strategic reason why I make a blab an hour instead of shorter because many of my one-on-one -on -one interviews on my podcast are 30 minutes. And my individual tips are usually between 10 and 15 minutes. On Blab, there's a very specific reason why I do them one hour, and here's why. And I'd be curious to see if you guys want to add anything to this or any of our other Blabists <laughs> are uh, seeing something different. With Blab, because of the viral interaction, it takes about 15 minutes to really start peaking the visibility to other people's audiences. Between about 45 minutes, I'm sorry, 15 minutes and 45 minutes, that interaction, that visibility, and that that uh, push out to the other people's communities is at its highest. So people are going to be joining you for at least 45 minutes. Then that last 15 minutes, you will find that some people will start popping off and, and you know, people start to, to need to go on, but you also keep getting new people because they're just hearing about you. So there is yeah. a peak period between 15 minutes and 45 minutes that you start getting a lot of new visibility that if you left, you know, at 20 to 30 minutes, you would miss. So that's why I do them for an hour. Also, when I have multiple guests, it gives everybody a little bit more time. Sometimes naturally it'll, it'll end earlier. Like this afternoon, I'm actually hosting a blab for the Women Speakers Association, which you could find at wsablabs.com. Tracy, maybe you can pop that in. And I'm doing a one-on-one -on -one interview, and then we're allowing our members to come in and get one-on-one -on -one time with this expert. So, of course, we're going to want to do an hour because, you know, we're going to have so many people wanting to talk to this person. She is a very well-known business uh, owner and mindset expert, Natalie Ledwell, so uh, co-founded Mind Movies. So there's a different reason, but it's a great question. And I, what I tell people is experiment. Figure out yeah. when do you have the best visibility, when do you get the most uh, people joining in, you know, do you find that there's a lot of drop off? It'll also have a lot to do with how well are you keeping people engaged, right? Are you interacting with them? Are you, you know, like uh, just talking and, and not acknowledging your audience? So um, I'm new at this, so forgive me if I didn't get to connect with everybody today, but I'm doing, uh, I think it's really important to connect with your audience and, and, and honor their questions and, and give them a shout out, right? So uh, anybody want to add anything to that about the time for a blab? Yeah. Yeah. And first of all, I want to acknowledge uh, David Kutcher of Confluent Forms. Like, it's not the size that matters. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Thanks. It's the content. But, you know, I've, I have found in my in the blabs that I've done, it's like my when I was doing my show, Adventures in Visibility on Hangouts on Air, I could keep them to be about 20, I mean, 30 to 40 minutes. I always say they're 30 minutes, but they always go around 40. Well, I have had a very hard time keeping them at 40 minutes on Blab. Yes. And I think that is because of the engagement is so much uh, uh, live, more lively and more um, immediate on Blab that you are connecting with people in the comments. They're posting their questions. They're easy to see and you can bring people on. It's very hard to control some, you know, hey, you have to stop. Stop talking, you know, when you when you're bringing on somebody to ask a question of your guests, because I always do guests yes. on, as well. So I'm just sort of like, OK, you like it's it's OK if it goes to an hour, because if people are connecting and getting value, that's the that's the key. So, you know, that's what I've found my experience. Well, um, David saying yes to run, but David, thanks for being here. Confluent Forms. I just want to remind everybody, you know, if you're new to Blab or you're, you are a Blabist, um, hey, one of the best ways to build up your following quickly is follow each other. You know, if you've enjoyed mm -hmm. the comments that are coming in, if you're enjoying the experts that were here today, uh, Coach Laura had to leave a little bit early for those of you that joined in. Uh, Denise Wakeman, partner in business, Tracy Emmon, myself, Melanie Strick, Mel Coach. Um, you know, we'd love to have you follow us. You can just click right up at the top. Uh, see that little uh, icon of a person and you can actually click on the person on the right to uh, follow them. So uh, the maximizer, Zeph, is saying hello, hi. <laughs> um, 
Okay, so Bright Zone US had a great uh, insight here. Thank you for sharing it. Time needs are relative to information exchange. If a broadcast, shorter is probably better, as people can only digest information for so long. Absolutely true. For exchanges of ideas, longer time is needed to help those ideas come out and evolve. And you know, I think sometimes the the kind of the round robin is where some of the best ideas come from because somebody says something mm -hmm. and it sparks an insight that you can't plan for, and now you've got you know new ideas coming out that wouldn't ever do it. And when you guys ask questions, it causes us to have to think about answers that we weren't planning or preparing. So your interaction with us is great. So great question, Walter. Thanks for asking it. Um, let's give a last opportunity for questions. Anybody just hit slash Q and then post your question. Okay. Um, if new messages. Okay. Those are people just interacting. <laughs> um, so one of the things that I want to ask you, uh, and I'll ask both of you, is if, if you could just say quickly what your uh, URL is again and who is the best client for you? Like, what is that client? And then that's how we know how to send people referrals, right? We know how to better share information. So, Denise, who's the best client for you? The best client for me is typically someone who's been in business for a while and they are a service professional, an author, speaker, coach, consultant. And they are looking to expand their presence on the web. They've been very successful in their offline business. And now they need to uh, really take advantage of the online world. And they are open to experimentation and trying things because that's my whole thing. Adventure. <laughs> and um, yes, adventure, the adventure of building your visibility. And um, uh you know, that they're looking to build an audience, you know, whether they're a filmmaker or an author. I've been working with a lot of authors lately. I'm building their audiences for book launches coming down the, the pike. So, yeah. That's Follow up question in one sentence. What is your best online strategy that attracts them? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> um working with them to develop a content marketing calendar. Yeah, good. So, um, Tracy, I'm going to ask you the same question. I'm going to ask you something slightly different. I wanted to hear, like, how do you get your, like, where do people find you uh, through your online marketing strategies? And who, who is the, the person that gets the best result from your work? So where people find me tends to be on Twitter and LinkedIn. Um, I'm also part of the Women Speakers Association, so I do a lot of networking sort of on behalf of, but it also allows me to build awareness about me personally and what I can do with people. My audience, or, or my, my best referral would be people that are really that have been putting a lot of effort, time, money into being seen online and just are not showing up or, or those people that have been sold a bill of goods where someone says, hey, I can get you on the number one page of Google for, you know, this this term and wonderful. They've actually delivered. So they've done exactly what they told you they're going to do. But it's for it's for a search term, a keyword that no one's searching for. And you don't want to be number one. You don't want to be found number one for search terms that no one's searching for. So what I really do is help people find out what people are actually searching for. And a lot of times that conversation gets quite turned around because we assume people are looking for us under certain terms and, and they're not. So that's part of what I do. It's if you're getting tired of just spinning your wheels, it's time for a conversation. Great. And you had mentioned, um, and, and I know that you've mentioned about websites. Right now, the website that we're directing you to is, is an opportunity to get a report on some keyword marketing secrets that you might want to check out. So just so you know when you go to that web page. Yeah, so keywordmarketingsecrets.com, Denise, you're at denisewakeman.com. Denisewakeman.com. Yeah, and uh, I'll just, uh, the reason why I asked that question is because when you know who your ideal clients are and you know who's looking for you, you can do a better job picking and prioritizing where you put your time and energy online. One of mine, believe it or not, is through virtual summits. And then cross promoting that through all of my social media channels. Oftentimes I'll do a podcast. We might do a blab session. We might uh, do an interview, short interview, post it video wise. I do that content repurposing Denise shared earlier. 
and help create visibility. And I get great leads from those online summits that people host. And fortunately, I get invited to a crap load of them. So I have to pick it because I can't unfortunately do all of them. So as you move into the new year, here's the, 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 the action I want you to take away from today. What are you going to do to power up your online presence? Which of these strategies are you going to put into place? Uh, pick one or two and focus on making them really, really work well. If you missed the uh, earlier part of today, this will be available here, but we'll also be repurposing this on my podcast, which you can find at MelanieBensonStrick.com. So thanks, everybody, for being here. Denise, Coach Laura, who's already left. Tracy, thanks so much for joining in the conversation today. We'll have another Power Up session next month in uh, January. And happy holidays, everybody. Thanks for being here. Bye. Thank you, Bye. Melanie. Thanks, Ron. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thanks for being here. Thank you.